My brothers and sisters, Allah Almighty tells us to develop a relationship with Him in the most beautiful way. Be conscious of what He has ordained. Be conscious of the do's and don'ts. Try your best to adopt what Allah has said and you will achieve a lot of comfort at all times. When goodness comes in your direction, you're thankful, so that's good for you. When evil comes or some negativity comes, you bear patience, so that becomes good for you as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, don't die except in the condition of submission. Now, what is meant by that? In verse number 102 of Surah Al Imran, he says exactly that. Don't die except in the condition of submission, which means lead your lives generally submitting to Allah such that if you were to die at any time, you're not caught sinning. Imagine dying while committing a sin. That would be a crisis. So Allah tells us to avert that. Try and make sure that you're always in the obedience of Allah. If you happen to sin because of human nature, immediately repent to Allah and don't become too comfortable in sin. A sign of goodness of a human being is regret. When you regret what you did, it shows that you are connected to Allah. You have a good relationship with Allah. Your bad deed should make you regret. When you don't have a good relationship with Allah, there is no regret factor. So this is why when you regret, thank Allah. It's a blessing to regret. People do a bad deed. They do many bad deeds. They feel within themselves, I shouldn't have done this. That's a very good sign. That's a comforting sign, subhanAllah, in the midst of a crisis. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, when your good deed makes you so happy and when your bad deed makes you regret, makes you sad, then that's a sign that you're a true believer. So good news, my brothers and sisters, when we falter and we regret, it's actually a favor of Allah. It's comforting. Don't let shaitan make you think for a moment that you are not worthy of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you know, there should always be a group from amongst you who guides people. Those are the successful ones. Listen to what he says in verse number 104 of Surat Al Imran. Let there be from you a group who calls towards goodness, uh, who calls towards goodness, instructing that which is good and prohibiting that which is bad. For indeed, those are the ones who are successful. That's the verse. Now, there should be a group reminding others about what's right and wrong. I want to derive a few things from this verse. Number one, be from among those who speaks with utmost respect to others. You are conveying what Allah has revealed to others. It's not done in a harsh way. It's done very calm. So speak to them respectfully. When you're encouraging people to do good, encourage them in the most beautiful, amazing way that they feel they want to do what you're saying. And when you're discouraging them from bad, discourage them in the most amazing, befitting way that they feel that we want to quit this. That's how the Prophet ﷺ used to talk to the people. And remember, the most successful are those who call others towards goodness in a beautiful way. However, yes, it is comforting. Yes, it becomes a very big crisis when we don't know how to call people towards goodness. When we yell and scream at them, it's a crisis. When we make them feel so unworthy of the mercy of Allah, it is a crisis. When we actually abuse them, belittle them, shame them, call them names, that is a crisis. Unfortunately, some of those who think they are pious fall into this trap sometimes and we don't realize it is a crisis. Comfort yourself by calling people with respect. Remember, you may have been there some time back. Now that you've come out, subhanAllah, you need to be lenient on them. And remember, if you haven't seen the dark days, there is a great chance that if you were to abuse people and belittle them, Allah might make you plunge into darkness after you saw the light, which is even worse. So don't be too arrogant. Don't think that you are more pious than everybody else. So that gives you a license to swear them and abuse them and curse them and hurl names. For indeed, that is a sign of your failure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who take heed before it's too late. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those are the truly successful. However, there is one more point that I want to raise here. And that is, if Allah has praised those who call towards goodness and discourage bad, don't feel bad when someone calls you towards goodness or discourages you from doing bad. So if someone were to tell you, my brother, I think you're making a mistake. It's not supposed to be done this way. Don't do it this way. Perhaps consider coming for prayer, consider praying in the masjid, consider doing the right thing, consider fulfilling your obligations. Don't swear back. 
Don't feel hurt. Don't feel bad. That was Allah who chose for someone to come and tell you and guide you. And the angels have written it next to your name and you will be asked and they will be asked on the day of judgment. Did you tell them? Yes, we did. Were you told? Yes, I was. What did you do? Well, you better have done the right thing. Minimum, don't feel bad. Thank Allah. Thank Allah that there are still people who can come to you and tell you what's right and wrong. There will come a time close to Qiyamah, close to the end, when nobody will be bothered about telling people what's right and wrong. Subhanallah. Today we use the term, don't judge me, in order to run away from advice. Consider the fact that they may not have been judging you. They may just have been telling you what's right and wrong. And yes, I do ask my fellow brothers and sisters who are encouraging people to do good, to do it in a beautiful way. I've said it already. This is a repeat. So don't feel bad when someone tells you what you're doing is not right. But I hope they told it to you in a nice way because it's a bit of both. It's a balance that we're looking for. When people are doing wrong, you want to correct them. You should be honored that someone is correcting you. Those who are correcting should do so in the most beautiful way. And those who are being corrected should accept it in the most beautiful way as well. Your weakness might make you continue for a while. But if you were to respect those calling you towards goodness and prohibiting evil, a day will come when you will quit the evil and you will adopt the goodness. But if you didn't respect them at all and didn't think anything of them, then that day may not come. May Allah guide us. So this is actually a double edged sword because on one hand, we have people who are harsh that discourage even those who are trying to come towards goodness. I've known of brothers and sisters who desperately want to come out of the harm that they're inflicting upon themselves. But unfortunately, it is the people who are calling them towards goodness who have done it in such a bad way that they have literally slapped them back into the evil that they were in, in a defiant way. May Allah protect all of us, all of us. We have a duty unto one another. That's why Allah says, you have been developed for man as an ummah. You are the best of people, developed for the people. So you serve the people, subhanAllah, by reaching out to them for the sake of Allah in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from those who take heed. It's a very important lesson. Now, in the Battle of Badr, which was one of the first battles that was fought by the Muslims to regain what they had lost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that two qualities, if they're found in people, the angels may come to help them. Well, at times of difficulty, the angels will come to assist. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. When I think of this, it brings tears to my eyes. In the Battle of Badr, if I can just go back, take you to that battle, the Muslims were only 313 and the enemy was actually a thousand strong and the Muslims didn't really go to fight. They just went for a certain purpose and Allah took them all the way to the place known as Badr. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, you know, we sent 3000 angels to help you on the day of Badr. And guess what? It's amazing. The day of crisis, the day of war, the day when the Leaf of the believers was being tested and Allah says, remember when we helped you during the battle of Badr, subhanallah, amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is verse number 145, Allah says, when we informed you of the 3000 angels and you told the believers of the 3000 angels, subhanallah, what happened? Yes. Allah gave them even better news of another 2000 angels who would actually come if they had two qualities on that day. Allah says, nay, behold, if you bear patience and you develop your taqwa, if you're conscious of Allah and you bear patience with those two characteristics, if the enemy were to swipe at you right now, we would send you 5,000 angels to protect you. Guess what? They were patient. They developed their taqwa. They were conscious of Allah. They were very, very patient on that day. They continued doing whatever they had to. They fought the enemy as best as they could, and they overcame the enemy with the help of Allah, who sent 5,000 angels to assist them. Amazing. Look at the day of crisis and the comfort sent by Allah. What was that comfort sent by? By two qualities, sabr and taqwa. Develop your patience, develop your relationship with Allah, and here against the enemy, Allah will grant you victory. 
And in the same way, my brothers and sisters, throughout our lives, there will be so many challenges, so many things happening, our enemies, people who don't like us for the right reasons, for the wrong reasons, whatever it may be. You know what? If you develop sabr and taqwa, then they will never have a right reason to hate you or to be your enemy. It will always be a wrong reason, but you will always emerge victorious. May Allah grant us victory at all times.